Also, if a seller thinks that a book is gonna continue to go up, they're not gonna sell it before then. I'm glad you said that. That's such a great point. All right, welcome back everybody to episode or issue four issue of the four. Comic Room Podcast. I am Spro, and with me as always is my co-host. Mr. Longbox. Mr. Longbox. Uh, today we got a uh, pretty exciting... I'm going to change this camera real quick. Sorry. Yeah, we want to get your good side. Right? <laughs> there we go. Uh, sorry, audio listeners. My uh, The camera that was on me was a little off-centered. Anyways, um, we got a pretty jam-packed episode this week. Um, we have Torpedo Con coming up. Uh, we got a Captain America trailer that came out. We got... A little Deadpool bet that we got yep. going. And uh, we're going to be talking about how to speculate. At least the kind of guidelines that we might follow. Um, and as well as kind of this like... F- f- I followed the who, what, when, where, why, and how question line of questioning sometime a few nights ago. Where I was just up late and my mind was just going. So uh, we'll kind of run through that and then... You got inspired. Yeah, I was inspired. Yeah, <laughs> I think I was editing the podcast and I was just thinking about it. So um, if you guys didn't know, we have a Patreon. It's officially live. We had to go through two account reviews, the account almost getting deactivated and a whole bunch of mess. But um, it's up there. There's both audio and video. Yep. Uh, at the time of this recording, there's audio for episode two and episode three. And there's video for episode two. Three, so I'll get the episode two video up, uh, hopefully in the next 24, 36 hours. Um, there's longer content on there at about like 30, a minimum of 30 minutes, right? Extra content we'll be aiming for. Um, that's kind of our starting point with the Patreon. More, we'll add more, right? We'll do more as the Patreon continues to grow and as we continue to to grow ourselves. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, this is the only starting point. So if you guys want to support the podcast, that is one great way to do so. Yeah. Um, alongside our, this is kind of like adjacent to the Patreon is it's not launched yet, but it will be coming soon. So make sure that you're ready for this is we're going to be launching a discord. Um, so we're going to launch, uh, <clears throat> yeah, not launched yet. It's currently being built out and created. Um, uh, but, it's free to join, so anybody can join the Discord. Right. Um, but if you want access to um, exclusive behind-the-scenes type stuff, that will um, be announced in the next episode or two. Mm-hmm. Um, then you can either be a patron in the Patreon, or you can be a member to this channel, which if you're watching on YouTube, you just hit the Join button below. And that'll give you access into the Discord, or sorry, access to the exclusive side of the Discord when that's launched. So um, just a little bit of a teaser, but we still got to build that out. So I'm just um, glad you're keeping track of all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. Uh, okay, so I think that's all of our announcements. Mm-hmm. Don't forget to, uh, if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe yep. to the channel. Share it with a friend. If, if you got friends that listen to podcasts or you just kind of like what we're doing or like what we're talking about, share it with a friend, yeah. let them know. Sure. And thanks for the comments that you're giving us. They're, they're a lot of fun. I, I, I love checking them out and interacting with you guys on those comments. See what you have to say. Appreciate the encouragement. Yeah. Thanks guys. Um, if you're on Spotify, like it. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how Spotify works. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, podcasts I don't know. On Spotify. Spotify. Yeah. Give us a like. I know you can comment on there because when I post, when I upload, it says to comment or enable or disable comments so yeah I don't know, leave us a comment let us yeah. know you're listening on spotify yeah. but uh yeah anyways appreciate you guys and now we're gonna move into our show and tell mm. so um i saw what you brought yeah i don't know I, think, what you're, I, don't, I have no idea what you have that's right i think your book is gonna look better <laughs> okay but my book is also pretty cool so i went first last time yeah <laughs> all right so in honor of TorpedoCon ah. this week, I'm going to my show and tell book is a book that I got at TorpedoCon last year. Last year, okay. Um, and one that you were probably a little bit envious of. A little bit envious of. Come on, I was very envious. So this is FF Annual Two. This is slabbed blue label, universal, 4.0, off white pages. 
Sorry for the gas. <laughs> All right, get on the camera right there. How's that looking? That looks pretty good. Look at the, look, look at the whites on that. It's just so, so it's such a pretty book. Here's the back. So, um, set this here. Ugh. I'm this, not sure why you thought mine was prettier than that. I don't know. I think it, yours is whiter than that one. That's just beautiful. Yeah. The, your green is better on that one, and the white is is better. I love it. Love the book. Um, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous book. Uh, and I just bought another one for sixty bucks. Uh, okay, I need. Okay, I need to give the story on this first. So, are you collecting <laughs> them? Are you, are you just like trolling me? So, What's happening? <laughs> so, uh, Fantastic Four Annual Two, uh, iconic Doom cover, Origin of Doctor Doom. Um, first Origin of Doctor Doom. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. First Origin of Doctor Doom and. Again, the Jack Kirby hulking, like big. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just it's gorgeous. When when I feel like when Kirby does that, that's when he's at his best. Um, but anyways, to the story, we went to Torpedo Con last year, and this was pretty early on. I think if if my memory serves yes, me right, it was. This was pretty early on, and there was a dude there who looked like he. His hair was frazzled. Yes. He looked like uh, what's his name, Doc from from Back to the Future. Yes, like he slept in his van. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he looked like he just like travels in a van, but his van is like Mary Poppins because out of it is just so many collectibles. Exactly. So we we're we're looking at it, and I mean, this has got to be the worst setup, like compared to everybody else. Yeah. Like he didn't have a comic wall. He had tables, and then he he had like books laying on the tables and then he had like some things to like prop up some comics and, and some books were like on the table with like plastic covering over them so you could see them yeah but you couldn't get them yeah but yeah, they, yeah. But, but they were like overlapping each other and so yeah. you really didn't i th I just kind of thought he wasn't set up yet or something but i think that's what it looked like the whole day yeah no so then we just like go to, to look at his setup and we i see this book and i grabbed it or I think I asked him to look at it. I don't really remember. But the bag was yellow. I remember the bag being yellow. Yeah. And I remember the backing board. Well, no, there was no backing board on no, it. No, it was just flopping around. Yeah, it was It was just in the bag. The bag was yellowing. And he had this. And I asked him how much. And I have to be honest. Uh, there's a little bit of a confession. I wasn't well versed in my FF prices at the time. Okay. So he... <clears throat> and, and I wasn't collecting Doom yet. Right. So... I had bought just like a few weeks prior at Shortbox the FF57, which mm -hmm. I showed last week. So this might have been like the second book that I had gotten in, in the whole Doom thing. So I wasn't well versed on, on my prices yet. Yeah. I wasn't informed. And I asked him how much he wanted. And he said 50. 50. Not $50, not 50, you know, yeah. euro. 50 bucks. 50 US hard earned American dollars. And I, I think I just said thank you. And then I like looked at the book. And then you were just kind of like, dude. I'm sitting there behind you watching this. And, and y like you're taking it out of the bag. You're inspecting it. And the whole time I'm thinking, there's, there's no decision to make here. Yeah. <laughs> but only because I've been collecting FF forever. Yeah. And that's one of the grails that I didn't have. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, I, I look at it and I'm like, eh, do I get it? And then Bob is just like, dude, you have to get it. And I was like, really? Like, there's there's writing on the back. Like, I don't know. And he's like, dude, you have to get it. And so I was just like, okay. So then I, I bought it, 50 bucks. Yep. And yeah, that was, I'm pretty sure that was my first buy at Torpedo yeah. last year. And I and I legit said, if, if you don't get it, I'm getting it. Yeah. Like, there's, there's, it's not. And so you bought it. And then, and then, of course, I'm, you know, I'm not my, now my, my eyes are big as saucers. I'm looking at everything else going, this guy's giving things away. Yeah. And he had an FF50 in there. And so I, you know, thinking maybe I'd get the same deal. Because the way he did it, he's like, I don't know, 50 bucks. Like, that's yeah. literally what he said to you. So I asked him about the FF50, and he looked at it, and he gave me a, a price that, that wasn't that kind of deal. It no. was more commensurate with what the book's worth. And, and uh, I think he was just trying to get the ball rolling, start selling some books or something. Yeah. I don't know. but uh, So I didn't buy the FF50 from him. And that's the, that's the book right there. Yep. So uh, I got it cleaned and pressed. Um, a YouTuber actually cleaned in Top Comics Pressing. Um, check out his channel. He cleaned and pressed this for me because it was pretty, like, I don't know if I have the before and afters. If I do, I'll throw them up. But it was, like, dirty, dirty. And he cleaned it up real nice. Yeah. At the time, I wasn't pressing Squarebound. 
So I sent him a couple square bound books to press. And yeah, came back a 4-0. I'm, I'm pleased with it. It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, it's gorgeous. I'll probably... I really love the cover. Um, I might upgrade in the future. I might not. I don't know. Well, you're collecting them now. so Yeah, so we'll see. Well, oh, would- okay, yeah. So then I ended up buying another another copy for $90 on a claim sale. And I ended up selling that one to you. And then last night... Hey, wait, wait, a- no, you sold it to me for more than 90 though, dude. Yeah, I, I had to make my money. Ah, you all <laughs> hearing this? <laughs> you make money off his father-in-law. I mean, you have to, right? Do you? It's, it's the whole point of speculation. Right, no, you're right. Um, <laughs> so then... Yeah, so, so then I sold it to you. And I, I think that that book looks better than this one. But the compensation is that the pinups inside, two of them are not, they're like, but they've been cut out, but they're, they're in there. They've been cut out. But I think that the whites are brighter on that. And I think the green is brighter on that. But there was like somebody wrote in Sharpie on the inside. Yeah. So there's a little bit of Sharpie bleed or yeah. like red Sharpie. It's like, yeah, the red Sharpie. So you get a pink bleed yeah. here of whatever was written aftermarket on the pay, on the yeah. splash page. But uh, yeah, I, we were trying to to figure that out. Like it's, if I were to send that book into into CGC, would it come back a green label or a blue label? Yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts on that? Because um, the pinups are there. They're there. It's complete. But is it complete? Because the pinups are there, but the but the white around the page yeah. is gone. We both kind of think it's going to come back green. Yeah. But there's a chance it won't come back green. Right. Uh, I just don't know. Like it's complete. But is it complete if a it's it's if a coupon's cut out, it's green label, right? But only if the coupon's cut out and it's gone. But I think I don't think it'd be green label because I, I sometimes what I think what they do with the green label sometimes is they give you the green label if there's something wrong with it and it's pushing a high grade. So it's like if they want to give it like a higher grade, like if it was like a I see. eight five nine zero or whatever, and they're like, okay, this but. book has some problems, but it presents really really nicely, so we'll give it a green label. But if it's like, it's already like a, you know, a three, five, four, oh, whatever, like we'll just keep it blue and then they'll make a note of it. Cause you'll get that with like covered detached. Right. Um, sometimes it'll be like covered detached two, five blue label, or it'll be like covered detached green label nine, three. So it's just like, but the other question, yeah, is, I don't, I don't really know. I don't know. Like, will they, could they possibly say, well, we have no idea. We can't be sure that, that these cut out pinups came from this book like in which case it'd be like a married married thing like would they yeah you know i i really the I just, pages look the same the, yeah, the same page quality. color yeah yeah i i might send it in just out of curiosity just yeah. just to find out i um, mean why not it would be kind of fun if it came back uh you know i feel like they owe it to me after giving me a, a purple label for my ff49 undeservedly <laughs> I, I deserve yeah. it to come back universal but um so yeah i can i can i can live with with the fact that you got this book that because if i'd gotten to the table ahead of you i would have bought the book wouldn't it? like you, you, that was the, the thing yeah it's in the family and i ha- and, and and because <laughs> you're like a magnet for ff annual two i have now a copy because yeah. of that so it's all good um great great choice yeah great and choice. then last night in a claim sale i got another one <laughs> where this this bottom right cover is hanging on by a thread that he said um so he said you can tape it and it'll probably hold and you'll probably get like a like a two O plus, um, and then he said there's a spine split here at the top, but he says he was selling it at a one one oh one five, or no one five one eight I think is what he was what he had it at, um, and he had it for ninety I think, I, or eighty no eighty five is what he had it yeah, at. That's a steal. And then somebody I and I was like eighty five it's cut I'm not really interested. And somebody offered uh, seven, no, somebody offered 50 and he countered with 60. And so I sat there and I was like, I'm going to give it time. I'm going to wait. And then the guy said, uh, I'll pass. And so I was like, okay, backup claim 60. And then I got it. And um, I was like, dude, $60. as soon as Doom hits all of these books. Yeah. And this is a key Doom. It's a key oh, Doom yeah. for the cover. It's a key Doom for the origin. I know people don't, don't. Uh, I collect origins the same way they, that they I think they used to, where you know yeah. it was really sought after. But but this is his first origin. It's been told and retold. Uh, what a cover! Uh, yeah, I love I love I love the the different colors. And Marvel was doing this for all the annuals, the ASM annual. Yeah, you know, I just love that look. 
It's yeah. just a great book. It's super cool. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this is, I don't want to spend a lot of time on this, but just as a side note, I have the omnibus. The, the, there's the, the first FF omnibus, which doesn't include this, but the second mm. one does. And the second omnibus, um, it's, in, it's, it's fantastic for uh, annual two story. You think those are, are complete, but I, I went page for page with the, with the annual two that I have. And what's in the omnibus is not the complete story. Yeah, which is weird. I don't know what story, what's up with that. I thought yeah. when I bought, when you buy an omnibus, you're getting basically page for page and you're getting the whole yeah. thing. Um, it's not. There's there's significant portions of FF Annual 2 story that are that are just excluded in the omnibus that are in here. So Interesting. Buyer beware for the omnibus. Yeah. If you're thinking like you're getting everything, you're not. I didn't know that until just this week. Yeah. So Kind of know. a bummer. Yeah, for real. Uh, also... Since I'm giving shout outs today, shout out to Wham Stand, um, who made us. Uh, we got these. Well, I bought these stands, and I have a few of them around the room. You can see this one behind me, too the Scarlet Witch. But um, we got the uh, comic room. Uh, it's a little magnet that just kind of like goes on there. So we got our logo on there. So now we're not scuffed trying to figure out which <laughs> books we're going to do for show and tell and pick the right magnet. But uh, it's nice. Yeah. So. Shout out Wham Stan. All right. Yeah. Okay, great book. Thank you. All right, so so mine uh, today uh, comes from uh, a, a book that I bought at WonderCon last year. 2023. Uh, 2023 WonderCon. So a couple WonderCons ago. And going back into the DC well for Detect, uh, Detective Comics 371, the iconic, I don't say it's iconic, but it's a, Gorgeous Batwoman cover. You remember this? Uh, I, I said. I What's think, the? Give us the the breakdown for the audio listeners who can't okay, see. Okay, this is a this is a cover, a gorgeous cover of uh, Detective Comics where it's a green background. Uh, the Detective Comics trade dress is in a like a like a magenta or light purple. It's gorgeous and predominantly featured on here is Catwoman. In the foreground, and Batman and Robin are fighting behind. Batwoman. Uh, did I say? Did I? What did Catwoman. I say? Yeah, sorry. Batwoman, Catwoman. There's or Batgirl. Bat, yeah, uh, Batgirl. Batgirl. Bat, Batgirl. And they are they're. Uh, she, Batman and Robin are fighting some bad guys, and Robin's like, "Hey, you know, Batgirl, we need some help, and <laughs> I, we got a problem here. We need to help us out." And and uh, Batgirl says, "I have a bigger one, a bigger problem." And then the, and the reason is a run in my tights. And she's got her <laughs> she got her right leg up and she's, you know, shocked. She's looking down and there's a run in her tights. Um, and that's the book. Uh, so uh, great and, and everything for those audio this listeners. This is an 8.5 off white pages. Uh, picked it up. CGC universal CGC grade. Universal grade. Um, it was one of those things where I, I'm, I'm uh, coming to the end of, of WonderCon and I still have some money to spend. And I haven't really picked up like the the key book of the con yet i've gotten some some books you know in the 30 dollar range 20 yeah. range but i haven't really i don't have the book you know how it is when you go to a con or whatever yeah. you, you kind of want to say well this is the this is the real prize that i picked up yeah and, and uh and it really wasn't that much i think it was uh less than 200 like 180 i think is what i paid for man i mean like you that. bought the, i remember you got that and then we like walked out the door and left yeah that was yeah. like literally the final purchase well, that, was, that was my i was down my last penny at that point i had no, <laughs> no point to stay no uh and i and i really um it was the cover that drew me to it. Um, it's, uh, you know, when I said a few issues ago uh, on the podcast that that DC, the DC Silver Age, they really spilled a lot of ink on these covers. Like they, they didn't waste any. Yeah. Uh, I shouldn't say they didn't waste. They, they didn't hold back yeah. as far as ink. And that didn't have to be that gorgeous emerald green uh, background color could have been white marvel just would have done white yeah because it was cheaper yeah but they they covered the entire thing with this beautiful green and then then the the rest of it goes on top of that so anyway gorgeous cover but that's not the only reason i bought the book um i bought it because it's a gorgeous cover i bought it because it's in high grade uh 8.5 according to cgc is the grade at which you kind of have to look very hard to find um supposed to be the grade where you have to look very hard to find any any problems with the book mm. um, like significant problems there's a there, 8.5 to a 90 8.5 to a 92 it's sometimes you can't really tell what the difference is but you should be able to tell the difference between an 8.5 and an 80 when you look mm. at an 80 you sh you'll see you know you'll see a crease in the corner like my green lantern 76 i showed last week this is just gorgeous and the color strike is amazing so there's another reason to get it 
But also, I, I like I said before, I I love uh, books, comic books that show culture, and and I've showed this to my students in, in my class, and you know, gotten some smirks and some unpleasant <laughs> eye rolls from the from the the young women in the class because you know it's very it's a very sexist cover, right? Yeah. Let's be honest, like, um, you know. I can't fight right now. I have a run in my tights. So yeah. This book, this book is uh, January nineteen sixty eight. So um, the, the 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 feminist movement that sort of changed things of of the late sixties, early seventies really hasn't manifested, obviously. Yeah. Uh, in this issue, at least. Um, so I I like that it like you couldn't get away with this now. DC, yeah. Marvel, they would never do this. No. Um, so it just screams. Uh, even in nineteen sixty eight, it feels a little bit, honestly, a little bit. Um, archaic for 19 by 1968 standards yeah. really it's more like 1958 standards right but i but i love i i don't love the sentiment of it but i appreciate that it represents kind of a bygone era of americana that <laughs> we can all agree is, is, is we're, we're happy to be at past that yeah um but it but it is it, it is from its time you know it's nice. the last vestiges of that and um by the way and it says so right up here this is in this book uh, again, Detective Comics 371. The, this is this is the introduction of a of a new Batmobile, and it's a Batmobile inspired by the Batmobile in the Batman TV show. Oh, cool! Yeah. So it was. The, it's the first time that the comic book uh, went in reverse. Like the comic book was yeah. inspired by the TV show. Oh, interesting! Um, and so uh, that's a cool little ditty too. Yeah. And and there's so so uh, a lot of a lot of collectors, uh, Batman collectors, collect. Cat, um, Batwoman cover or Batgirl covers, but then there's a lot of Batman collectors who like Batmobile covers. And, yeah, and who doesn't love those Golden Age Batmobiles? On yeah, the covers, right. This is kind of a low key, interesting Batmobile collectible because it's not on the cover, but it is significant because it's a new Batmobile, but also significant because it's inspired by the Batmobile in the TV show. Yeah. So, anyway, it's a nice. great book. I love the book. Great. Yeah. Beautiful cover. Yeah. All right, that's our show and tell for the week. Um, on to news. I uh, just showed you right before we started filming. Uh, we got the Captain America trailer, so it's pretty fresh on your mind. I've mm. had I've had like a week to uh, yeah. kind of stir on it. But what's your uh, what's your initial reactions to it? My I, I my initial reaction was when can I see the movie? Like, yeah, I was pumped. Uh, it looked like a it looked less like a comic book and more like a movie. If that makes sense. Yeah, like it was it was you know, it's got Harrison Ford playing. Uh, president, uh, <laughs> it, it just it, it has really epic, high stakes visuals. It looked really good. Yeah, it it was the best looking trailer I've seen in years from Marvel. It's a political thriller. I loved it. Similar to uh, what is it? Um, Captain America: The Winter Soldier. Yeah. That's a political thriller. It had like a Tom Clancy, clear and present danger feel to it. Yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. It really, it really looked like. How do I say this? Marvel not trying to show us a comic book, but Marvel giving us these iconic characters and putting them into a story that merits a motion picture. Yeah, that's the way it presents in the in the trailer. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. Um, be interested to hear your thoughts on it. But uh, when when's the movie coming out? Uh, Valentine's Day next year, twenty twenty five. They're just killing me on this stuff <laughs> again. Uh, that's a that's a long wait. It is, yeah, um, yeah. I'm excited for it. It looks great, Giancarlo Esposito. Um, there's a couple. His character hasn't been confirmed. Um, the biggest name going around is G W Bridge, which is a character tied to arms dealing and X Men. Um, but he said in an interview recently that nobody has guessed his character, so. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll see. I'm not really sure. He said that he's also going to be pretty important in some up upcoming series um, that Marvel has planned. So I don't know if that means Ironheart, if he's like an hmm. arms. I mean, we see him messing around with guns and shooting. Yeah. So. Well, he's a great villain. And if you got Esposito on the payroll, you got to keep him on the payroll. Cause yeah. He's just too good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure who he's going to play. I haven't really like spec too much, but. They should just give him I, who, whoever he plays is. When should you find out? Get the get spec on that book. You know, people wanted him to play Doom, and I was like, "What? No, 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 no! no. Don't cover no. his face. No, no, yeah, he's too menacing for that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. Um, at the end of the trailer, we got um, Red Hulk, and um, that book 
nine eights have been mm -hmm. selling and being priced crazy high on eBay, like ridiculously high, um, like yeah. in the thousands. I think there was one so, being listed for like three thousand. I know <laughs> we're gonna get to spec specking all that in a bit, but if you're holding a red Hulk, you know, first red Hulk one, whatever, whatever, you know, the first red Hulk. Uh, which is an interesting conversation that we had a little earlier. Uh, what does it really mean? But if you have that book in a nine eight, sell it now. Yeah. So, right now, sell it. Yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll get into our opinions <laughs> about. Yeah, we'll we'll get there, kind of defined. But yeah, I think now is the time to sell. I had two raw copies, and I sold them both on eBay this week. Yeah. Um, I made money on b both of them essentially. Yeah. Um, I I I made them. In bundles too, like because I had, uh, I had like a higher grade and I had a lower grade, and then I had kind of copies of the first few issues of that run, so I just separated the highest grade ones and lowest grade ones. Yeah, bundled them up and just kind of make it more appealing to people. Yeah, um, and they sold pretty fast. So the lower, I'm surprised the lower grade one sold before the higher grade one. Hmm. Um, yes, that, that surprises me for a newer book. But, but. yeah. I think I had it at like a seven or a seven five for the lower grade, and oh, then okay, well that's not that bad. That's, and then it's still pretty high. Yeah, and then a nine oh nine two for the higher grade, but I think if if you press the, the higher one, you'll probably get. I think it'll get like a nine four nine six probably, but I always yeah. try to under. Yeah, under, under you want to yeah undergrade undergrade. It, it's hard to sell. It's hard to sell raw books on eBay. Yeah, you know, and I and it's hard to buy raw books on eBay. Like yeah, I, you know, I've done it. And I've been pleasantly surprised, and I've also been disappointed. But those—that's that, the deal. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we also got the leader. Um, hmm. He was in the trailer. You saw the back of his head. He was wearing like this fedora type thing. Yeah. Um, you could see the wrinkles in the back of his head. So hopefully his head just gets bigger and bigger. Because <laughs> uh, that's—I I think first leader is pretty pretty undervalued too, as far as books. Yeah. Um, and I can't think of the actor's name, but he's a brilliant actor. Um, and yeah, what else? We got some. There's a lot of controversy around the movie. Um, we won't get into it, but I th sometimes I feel like it's just Twitter being louder than it actually is. Mm. Um, but Sabra is in the movie, and she is an Israeli um, character. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of controversy. Sure. And there's people saying that they're not going to see the movie because of her. And then it's like... Then they're like, well, if we do that, Disney's going to think we're not seeing it because there's a black Captain America now and we don't want them to think that. So essentially, it's a lot of race dialogue uh, around the movie. And it's uh, I, I think in my opinion, I think it's just Twitter being a little bit louder than it probably is. Um, right. As far as I know, in the reshoots following um, what happened in October, Disney went and reshot and changed the character from what they had originally planned. And now yeah. that they made that character um, part of the Black Widow program. So um, if, you, if you've seen Black Widow, you know that all the, the women that were in that program that were brainwashed kind of got set free. So whether or not they chose to go down a good path or a bad path mm -hmm. after that is yet to be seen. And it kind of seems she's in the trailer a few times. She kind of has like a little bit of a menacing look. So... Seems like she might not have interesting gone down the good path, but yeah. So I think that they shaped the character a little bit, um, but or sorry, reshaped the character following what happened in October. So still yet to be seen. Poor Marvel can't catch a break, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. It's just you, you, you. It's a catch. It's a catch twenty two for everybody. Apparently, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Marvel I, can't do this, just, and they can't do that. Yeah, I mean, like I, like I said last time, just, you know, have, go to the movie, have a good time. Yeah, you know, that's for sure. On it. There's there's room for all the other stuff, too. But go have a good time at the movies. Yeah, you know? we could all use to have a good time, don't you think? Yeah, I think the important thing is, as far as like the whole, you know, race conversation around the movie, and it seems like it's actually going to be part of the movie based on what Harrison Ford had said. Yeah. He says you you might be Captain America, but you're not Steve Rogers, um, and he says I know. Um, I'm or he says I'm not. I or yeah, I'm not. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's just like it, a little bit of tension there between oh, them. Yeah. And, you know, Steve Rogers is like the representation of, 
America and justice, like actual justice. Right. Um, and doing right by your country in a wholesome way. Um, and so, you know, you kind of slide somebody else in that title, no matter who it is, you're going to get a little bit of a, um, I mean, I think Captain America as a character could use a little bit of an edge. It doesn't really, I yeah. mean, you know, why not? Right. And that I, I love seeing, uh, you know, the, the captain, this version of Captain America also show off some of his Falcon skills because that yeah. showed up in the trailer, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Like, whoa. Okay. So I think similar to Miles Morales, like Miles Morales is Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. No matter how you want to cut it, dice it up, Miles Morales is Spider-Man. So in the same way, Sam Wilson is Captain America. Yeah. It's just whether you like it or not, that's mm-hmm. that's how it is. Yeah, live with it. Um, there's characters who hold their, their titles and... That'll never change, like a Batman, probably. There'll probably never be another Batman. There'll be Batman adjacent and alike. Right. Um, but yeah, Damon yeah. Wayne, Damon, uh, I must say Damon Wayne. It's funny. <laughs> Damian Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, well, um, actually, I think he was supposed to play Robin in the ba- Batman and Robin movie. And then, oh, okay. And then he ended up, I don't know what happened, but it ended up going to Chris O'Donnell. Interesting. Yeah, I, I, I would have preferred the former, I think, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Yeah. But uh, yeah, um, you know, it's you, you can't you can't take uh, Bruce Wayne out of Batman. It's just you just can't do right. it. You know, it, 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 it's too inherent. It, who he is as a as a in his real world. And that's debatable, too, you know, which is the real <laughs> yeah. Bruce. But um, is is part is part of the conversation of what Batman and who Batman is. You yeah. can never, ever get rid of that. Like and if you did, you're losing what's good about it. But Captain America, you know, Captain America is kind of a um, stereotype, like in a way, like Captain America is just Captain America represents something. Yeah. More than he is Steve Rogers. He right. just it's what does he represent? So why why can't that change? Yeah. Like you can definitely divorce that from Steve Rogers and still be Captain America. And right. In a way, it allows Captain America to and should change yeah. as, as America changes. What represents America probably ought to change as as our, our understanding about America changes and, and what you know, who lives in America changes. Yeah. So I think that's, I think Captain America is ripe for that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, cool. I'm excited. Oh, I can't wait, but I guess <laughs> I'm going to have to wait because, uh, yep. uh, I, I have no choice not until Valentine's day. And that's, that's assuming they stay on schedule. Right. I think, I think it will stay on schedule. Cause I, I mean, okay. Barring another COVID. Don't even say that. <laughs> or, uh, or another writer strike. We, we don't need it. Yeah. Please writers stay on the job. <laughs> But on the topic of that, that kind of leads us into our how to be a good speculator. Mm. So, um, oh, I'm going to run through these questions um, and then we can just talk about them. Yeah. Um, and then at the end of it, we'll kind of talk about our individual ideas of how, how we speculate and how do you speculate. Mm. Um, I guess the question that I want to answer by the end of it is how do you speculate well? And this comes out of a of a stream of consciousness, almost a thought process that you had yeah. uh, about a week ago, and you know, you you text me said I have this really cool idea, and, uh, and it's very intriguing, and and your thoughts on this are very interesting. Yeah. yeah. So so it kind of came from the king of collectibles and being frustrated with that. Uh, it also came from hearing, um, you know, on claim sales. I'll get into this, but sellers the way that they sell their books um which they have fully the right to do and i'm not irritated or frustrated by that but i just think the marketing behind it kind of made me think about it okay um and then the ever-changing hot 10 hot comics of the week that's on key collector right so in i think in a hobby where there's people who are trying to flip what somebody in our, our comics call them grifters um <laughs> That was cool. Grifters and <laughs> um, yeah, just in a hobby where, where people are making profits on this, um, it's easy to be manipulated and it's easy to be gaslighted into thinking um, some books are bigger than they are. It's happened to me. I've been a victim of it. Me too. Um, and I've, well, when I've later kind of had that realization, I've stopped completely stopped doing business with those people because mm. I think. I think if you're manipulating 
people into yeah. buying books and you're trying to manipulate the market. I just think you're a bad business person. Um, so just kind of like all of those things kind of uh, manifesting itself into the stream of consciousness. So um, I ended up breaking it down. It didn't start like this, but I found this was the easiest way to organize it um, in who, what, when, where, why. And then the final question is how do you speculate? Well, so that's our how. Um, so hopefully we'll have answers for that. So uh, how to be a good speculator. Um, and I, th- oh, the last thing I'll say before we get into the questions is um, we live in the age of comic book movies. Um, right. They dominate the box office. Mm-hmm. Other movies have been failing at the comic book office. Uh, or <laughs> other movies have been <laughs> failing at the box <laughs> office uh, because of just the way that, you know, I'll, I'll say is the way that the MCU has done it has created a universe. And so now everything's, you know, trying to create a, create a universe or everything is trying to tap into nostalgia yeah. Um, creating another sequel for a movie that didn't need a sequel, doing a remake for something that didn't need a remake. A um, prequel, you know? Yeah, a prequel. And, and these are the things that are selling at the box office, not um, good original um, sto- uh, scripts right. and, and stuff. So, um, yeah, just with, with the power that comic book movies have in our culture, um, that obviously impacts us. Oh, hundred percent. And uh, it can be helpful for us, you know, if if we're flipping our way up into, you know, speculating on books to sell to help us get more money to buy the book that we actually want. Um, and yeah, other ways of, of speculating. Yeah, the just mo- the movies ex- are, act as an accelerant on the on the speculation process. Yes. Yeah. So, or maybe just having these books in your in your boxes that um, kind of been sitting there. Uh, for a long time and you're like, Oh, I, I kind of hit some gold on this. So, um, yeah, MCU dominates the box office and that directly impacts our hobby. So, uh, without further ado, we'll get into these questions. So the first question I have is, um, who is doing the market impact, which I guess we kind of just answered, but, um, yeah, why don't you go ahead and answer that question? Then I'll give, I mean, the, who, who's like, when you at what do you mean by that? Like who's to clarify that for the listener and a viewer? Like, um, so let me see. I'm reading my question here. These movies get announced. These care are these actors get announced for playing in these roles. So books start to pop up. But who is the one that's actually kind of pumping these books? Is it, you know, is the average comic book movie viewer, are they in the hobby? Not really. Not really, no. So where where is the connect, like, where is that connection being made, essentially, from movie to hobby? It's got to only be really one of two. And I see it's going to be the the buyers, it's going to be the sellers. Yep. Yeah. So we have two, we have two, (laughs) we have two uh, suspects in this. Um, And I think that the the knee-jerk, or a reaction would be to say, well, it's the it's the speculators themselves, it's the buyers. Like we're the ones doing it. Like we, you know, and in a way that's true, right? Like, oh, I just saw the trailer and Red Hulk's ankles appeared in the movie, so let me run out, you know. Yeah. And we were just talked about that. So yeah, absolutely. Um, at first blush, you're gonna say, well, it's probably, I would say it's the it's the buyers that 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 fuel the speculation. Yeah. You know? Um. I don't want to tip the, your hand on any of this stuff, but that's you know. Yeah. And you know, that's. And that's so, kind of like what what yeah. we're told too is like we hear this in claim sales all the time or, or at, at a comic convention when you're talking to a dealer is, yeah. um, Oh, these are, these are flying off the yeah. shelf. A book gets hot. What does that mean? It means that means people are asking for it. Like the yeah. hear sellers say that a lot, right? Well, I'm getting getting asked for this a lot or I can't, I can't, I, they, they, as soon as I put them up on the shelf, they they fly out. Um, so therefore I got to raise the price and that's all just good. You know, that's good. <laughs> being a good seller, I guess. Yeah. That. But yeah, the, 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 the it, it starts with, Hey, do you have that book? I'm looking for that book. You know, yeah. Two people want the same book. Price goes up. So, so I have here as an answer to the question, the younger audience, just they're not translating from movies to hobby to the hobby. Like we just do not have a lot of young people in the hobby, which I think is a problem. Yeah. Um, so collectors, speculators, <laughs> viewers and listeners, bring your kids to the comic shop with you. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um, so they're interested in the movie. So they're interested in the whole lore. Yeah. More than they think that they 
actually are. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's there's not a lot of direct correlation from these younger audiences getting into the hobby, which is a totally something else that we could get into in another episode. Um, the general audiences aren't translating, no. so it's like you know, like my wife, for example. You know, right. Yeah. yeah. She, you know, we we go to see see uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. You know, she she likes the movie. She you know thinks it's good or whatever, but she's not even considering that that there's a comic book connected to it. Right. It's, she knows there are comic book characters, but right. she's not thinking the way you and I would think about it. Totally. So, so yeah. it's not general audiences. <clears throat> so from a general pop culture aspect, the impact seems minimal mm-hmm. at best. Um, let's be honest too, with these general audiences, these, these movies and TV shows are being heavily critiqued. Um, mm-hmm. MCU is under a lot of fire recently for just not producing quality content. Yeah. Um, probably ever since post WandaVision COVID era, it just seems like they got into a, let's just crank out as much content as we possibly can. We were getting two to three shows a year. We were getting two movies a year. We were getting a lot of content and I think that burns out people mm-hmm. and also puts them in a position where they're not creating to the highest quality that they could. Um, and somehow or another, whether intentionally or or by association, they've been dragged or placed themselves squared in the in the middle of the culture. You know, some culture wars where you know people will say, "Well, we we don't want we don't want you pushing your agenda on us and your movies." And other people say, "Well, you know, what are you talking about?" Like, and I, well, that's yeah. that's a topic for another day too. But but yeah, definitely that's been a, that's been the origin of a lot of criticism. Yeah, you know? and just for, I guess for a little bit of soft data for why I think general audiences aren't translating to the hobby is you just take a walk around a con and there's a difference between people that are in the comic book section compared to people who are out front doing cosplay yeah. compared to people who are in artist alley. Like it's a very different audience. Like if we go to torpedo or when we go to torpedo con um, this weekend, the people who are going to be there it's going to be a lot different than even the people that you see at a WonderCon yep. or an LA Comic Con um, because it's very collector focused. So even if you just go to your small shows in your area, mm-hmm. like that's going to be a huge tell of who are the people that are collecting. Yeah. Um, so you got that. And um, yeah. So um, the general public not translating general public critiquing the heck out of these movies. Yet these books are still getting pumped. So. What's getting impacted here? Well, I don't think that it's these solidified blue chip books. Uh, blue chip books kind of live in their own realm uh, mm-hmm. in the market. Yeah. Um, a Batman movie getting announced is not going to pump up Detective 27. No, uh, <laughs> no it won't. It, it, or, or a Batman movie tanking is not going to is not going to tank Detective 27. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, so, but you do occasionally get a new blue chip. Um, sure. Avengers one is kind of a newer blue chip mm-hmm. prior to the Avengers movie. Um, I mean, you, you kind of yeah. have a little bit more. There's no first on appearances this. in it. You know, it's a, it's yeah. the first team appearance, but prior to the movies, you know, with all due respect, the, the Avengers who really, you know, who cares? Like yeah. if they're, I shouldn't. Yeah. Well, well yeah, who cares? Like it they, was just the Avengers. They, they were, were the C team. Yeah. You know, they were, they were, assembled from superheroes that had their own lives outside of the Avengers. But the movies made the Avengers be a thing. Yeah. So hundred percent. Yeah. Avengers one has ticked up the, uh, you know, it's now in that same echelon significantly. With, yeah. 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 You know, or right close to it, you know, yeah. with, with Hulk one, not quite, but getting there. Um, Iron Man 55 is another one that was mm-hmm. meant absolutely nothing 15 years ago. You know, and now it's like yeah. in a higher, in a high grade at least. It's a pretty pricey book. And yeah. I think that's, and I, I think that is directly correlated to the fact that like the movies created something that was really, really good. Yeah. And, like, and, and while you're at it, I'll say, uh, tales of Sus- tales of suspense, 39 first Iron Man, same yeah. thing. It, it was th- third tier silver age key forever. Yeah. And uh, and now it's first tier Silver Age key. It's you know it's right it's right there with you gotta FF1. Have it. Yeah, it's it's in it. No, I'll say it's tier one one B because one A is stands alone in the on the, in Marvel uh, with AF15, and then you have 
Fantastic Four one, Hulk one, but Tales of Suspense 39 is in there too. Yeah, for sure. It used sure. to be down there with First Thor, uh, even below First Thor. Now it's, and that's all to do with Robert Downey Jr., frankly. Totally. And he was, um, he just, he, um, he just channeled uh, Tony, as Tony Stark. He just yeah. was perfect. Yeah. And so that first Avengers movie is just so good. Mm-hmm. And yeah. RDJ is great in it. Chris Evans is great in it. Yeah. Everything about that movie is just, you have an actual Hulk, not the stupid pro- Professor Hulk that we have nowadays. Yeah. Um, and so then you just create a bunch of movies, right? Avengers 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever. And they become huge, <clears throat> excuse me, huge box office hits. Yeah. And everybody loves them. So therefore the book gets bumped. Thanos, incredible villain that spanned the duration of 10 years. Right. That book bumped up and it for the most part held um yeah came down since 2021 and stuff but i mean compared to where it was it's and and this is all a new phenomenon because it did back when lou ferrigno was do was starring in the tv show the hulk you know uh you didn't it, the hulk one did spike up because of that right um it's it's more of a recent phenomenon i think i think the you know the ubiquity of information on the internet helps that a lot you know everybody wants a piece of that character yeah i want to buy stock in the hulk Right. How do I do that? <laughs> well, get get Hulk one. Yeah. I can't afford Hulk one. Hulk one. Well, fine. Then get the, get the first Green Hulk. Get Hulk two. <laughs> you know, yeah. Remember, they didn't make a mistake on the printing. Uh, yeah. So it's blue chip comics, not really the ones being impacted. Um, but it's these minor spec keys that are being yeah. impacted. So a couple examples that I have here are Peter Parker Spectacular number twenty four, first Hypno Hustler. <laughs> right. That, that book was. <laughs> I mean, people, they were trying to get you to buy it in their dollar bins, yeah, these comic yeah. shops. It wasn't. There was no mark. There was no specific, hey, by the way, this is the first appearance of this character. Right. But then they tie it to Donald Glover, which is a well-loved name. And then, boom, bump. Hulk won. Red Hulk. Right? Yeah. I, I partook in it. I, I sold my, my copies. Yeah. Bought it. Sold it. You, you, you specced it perfectly. Yep. And then uh, the other example here I have is Godzilla 1. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good example. These Godzilla movies, yeah. it was like there was none, and then it was just like there was like five movies yeah, that was all like came 70, out. Seventy fifth anniversary or something like that of, of Godzilla. It was something we said. Let us know in the comments. I, I know it was. <laughs> it, I think it was a seventy. I don't know. It, it was an anniversary of Godzilla. They just repr- They just did a facsimile Marvel of Godzilla one. And I, um, I saw it. One of our. I uh, laughed. One of our local shops here, not kind of like a neighboring city. He posted a picture of it, the owner, and then he said, I never thought I'd see the day, but here it is. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, so blue chip, blue chip comics aren't being uh, impacted. It's uh, these minor spec keys with really just no-name characters. And um, it really just seems like people are kind of hoping it's going to be the next Avengers 1. Mm-hmm. It's going to be the next Iron Man 55. Um, and so... Yeah, There's hope. that. That is the, hope is the is the seed of all speculation. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's our what. So who? Um, well, what? We've eliminated a few. Yeah. Okay. Who? What? Uh, now when? Okay. So when are these books being impacted? We kind of answered a little bit in the last yeah. question, but well, no, no, as soon as soon as the information drops, you know, I, I mean, casting, you know, the, well, first, oh, there's going to be a movie. That's your first wave, you know. Oh, I think there's gonna be moves in production, you know. Yeah. Even if it stays in production forever, like Blade, you know, it's it's that 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 pumps the book. Um, but then, you know, so it's, and, and as the information drops, you know, this this the casting, and then, yeah. And then, like we just talked about the trailer for, um, for the latest MCU movie. So I mean that that then that pumps excitement. So again, it's tied to the movie, right? Yep. So I got movie announcements, leaks, rumors. Like that's how far this is going. That like. Leaks. Yeah. I mean. And it's really fun. It creates a lot yeah, of Yeah, no, it, it is fun. I'm not, yeah. Like, like, like I said, I'm not I'm not dogging on it. And I think a lot yeah, of this. This is a great analysis. Impacts the way that like even I buy stuff. But yeah. movie announcements, so straight from the studio. Rumors, stuff from maybe journalists. Yeah. Um, we know Entertainment Weekly has has come out and said they've had their inside sources some if someone's in the same booth at the super bowl with the you know, you, yep all of a sudden x 130 shoots up you know? yep exactly um and then leaks um so it's kind of like your three tiers of announcements where clear cut from the studio the studio is saying yes we have cast this person or yes this movie 
this TV show is coming out. Rumors, journalists kind of saying, um, inside sources tell me, um, and most of the time those kind of have a little bit more weight than a leak because they will tie like some sort of, um, like they'll name the source or, yeah. um, they'll give, because they're journalists, they, they want to have credit to their name yeah. as, as long as they're in journalism. So, um, you would hope. So that's rumors. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we have leaks, which are most of the time from like Reddit, random Twitter accounts that yeah. Do not name their sources. <laughs> Some speculator who owns 25 copies of a certain book. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe they're just doing market manipulation. But um, yeah, so leakers that, that have probably friends or family that work for these movies. And, yeah, which can actually be a real good scoop. Yeah. Um, there's there's a couple out there. I One of them that I follow is, can we get more toasters? No, that's not it. It's that I think that was an old one that isn't active anymore. It's my time to shine. Hello, I think is the one that I follow. Okay. Um, they kind of do the most leaks and they're hit or miss. I've seen them announce or say stuff and then it doesn't come and then seen them say other stuff and it does come and you know, things, things change. Uh, yeah. Studios give different information to different departments and mm-hmm. you know, that's also how they sniff out their leakers and stuff. So um, leakers can't be trusted because obviously the studios know that these things go on. So and they utilize them. Yeah, know? for sure. I mean, they would have to. For sure. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's our win. Pretty short. Yeah. Short answer is just any sort of announcement really. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously the biggest one being from the studio, because then as a seller, at least that kind of gives you a little bit more like of a solid standing to be like, this isn't coming out of nowhere. This is mm-hmm. the, the studio. Disney said this. Warner Brothers said this. This is happening. Right. So get this book. Um, Which is good. It's fair. Yeah. Um, Okay. So who, what, when. Now we're in the where. Where are the purchases happening? People are selling these books. We're getting a little bit of market data. Right. We get some documentation that that these books are going. So so where is this happening? Another short answer. It's just eBay eBay is is the best recorded um, site that we have. And then you have claim sales. Yep. Um, Yep. and, and not heritage because that would, we're talking blue chip stuff and that's, not, that's yeah. not what's getting sold. So it's the cheaper stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and, the, and with three digits and sometimes four. Right. Know, but mostly it's eBay. And then, and, and if it's recorded anywhere else, but you find it on, you know, uh, Go Collector or uh, what's the other one? That you're GPA. GPA. Yeah. So, yeah. So eBay is, yeah, the best place for recorded data for that, that type of stuff. And then obviously claim sales, you have stuff. I mean, every day there's yeah. probably a claim sale going on somewhere. And I know well, this is a topic for another day, but I do I do know that, or I've heard at least that, uh, you know, some the the way GPA takes the, takes information from from eBay can get skewed. You know, I uh, yeah. And, but that's they were talking about that last night. Yeah, that's sale. exactly where I heard it. And I'm like, and I and there was some corroboration from the seller saying, yeah, I've seen that, and uh, we've, we'll have to investigate that for some other episodes. But, yeah, uh, but. For now, that's the best we have. That's what we have. Yeah. So, you know, buyer beware, I suppose. But, I mean, we're all seeing the same data. Yeah. You know, so. Cons, too, but cons kind of aren't as consistent. Um, obviously, they happen sporadically throughout the year. Mm-hmm. Um, but claim sales on eBay, every day, a I sale did, is happening. I just remember wait, waiting for the uh, the annual Overstreet Price Guide that would get published. And there's a whole, man, it was like 30 pages where they would just get um, reports from sellers, and so and they would say, I, "I these are the books that sold this year," and um, and it was really fun to see the specific. Uh, we don't have to. We're not waiting a year to get that information. In. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. There's also comic shops, but again, comic shops they don't record their data, and most of those com like comic shops they don't record the data, and I feel like they're not always necessarily like in the game of speculation. Right. Um, because they have overhead and bills they have to pay, they're very much in the game of let's get books in, let's get books out. eBay is great because it's very, um, it's very democratic. Like it's just gonna you're gonna buy. It's gonna sell. It, it reflects the market. It is right. I mean, uh, I've seen sellers at cons have their book on the back of a book. Here's the here's the last sale yeah. price on eBay. This is how I priced it. And that's fair because that's, that's you know, it, it, if it was sold as, as a bid, as an auction, like yeah. this is what it was. 
um, you know, it, it was set out there to the general public and somebody paid this much for it. So yeah. That's why I, that, that's the stop. That's the new high or the new low. Um, so it's good. It's a good, it's a good data entry point, I think. Yeah. Um, all right. Who, what, when, where, who, what, when, where, and this is kind of where I'm going to drop a little bit of a bomb all right, that I think is going to shake up the, uh, where FOMO comes from essentially mm -hmm. and where speculation comes from. Cause FOMO is the engine that drives a lot of this. Yes. Um, so why is there such a strong correlation impact from movies to books? We've already kind of laid out that the average viewer is not in the hobby. So there's not a lot of pop culture impact. So there's something going on deep in the hobby that's kind of connecting these two. Yeah. Um, the comic book movies, that's obvious. So there is direct correlation there. Um, is it out of touch resellers? Maybe, but I feel like a lot of them have been thinned out. Yeah. Um, since 2021, 2022, they're kind of probably flipping houses now or finding <laughs> the next thing. It's sure it wasn't lasting. The market came down. There's, there's no more money in it for them anymore. Um, the likeliest option is FOMO, right? That's the thing that drives these sales is the fear of missing out. FOMO, I think is like everybody has it to an extent like mm -hmm. it might not even be directly connected to movies it could be connected to something else that people aren't speculated on right like your friend has a copy i have a copy of ff annual 2 you don't so now you have fomo mm -hmm. <clears throat> that's that's a form of fomo fair <laughs> <laughs> and then i make money because i i sell you yeah, ff annual right, 2 you know. but i think a lot of times when people talk about fomo they talk about it from a buyer's always a from buyer a buyer having only FOMO. from a buyer's because you know, I'm, I, 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 there's a there's a book, I don't own it, and it's now going up in price. Yeah, and I would like to have this in my collection. I've always wanted it, or I want it because it's going to be significant. I better get it now because it's going to be worth more in a week. Yeah, or I'm sorry, it's going to cost me more in a week. Is yeah. the more accurate way to look at it. And so, buyer FOMO is the is is the the most obvious thing everybody is going to think about, right? Yeah. But I actually don't think it's buyer FOMO. I yes, think it's seller FOMO. This. Yeah, seller FOMO. Seller so, FOMO. Right. Seller FOMO is an interesting... It's an interesting pairing. Fear of missing out, but the seller's fear of missing out. Yeah, unpack that. So I think seller FOMO is what creates buyer FOMO. Okay. Seller FOMO is they're having FOMO on the profits, Fear of missing out on the profits. And I think that this is kind of what drives this speculation market is because they have a lot more on the line than we do. Fair. They have m money into these books, right? You're talking on, on average, like I'm not talking like a flipper. I'm talking like a seller, like, and you know, they, they might've speculated on books. So now that they're in on the book and maybe it was like, they hit it on the head so like it's a it's a book that naturally has gone up right i I'm, i can't think of any examples right now but maybe thinking of like a something a little bit more reliable like a like a hulk 340 or mm -hmm. um like an ff6 something that just has a little bit is not quite a blue chip but is likely a silver or bronze age book that is going to hold its value mm -hmm. um so they're going to have those but then um, they might speculate on, on some other stuff, maybe more modern stuff, maybe a little bit more risky stuff. So they put some money into it and an announcement hits. People might not necessarily be into it, but it's now or never essentially. Right. Um, and so I think that that is what creates the buyer FOMO. And I think that's what creates the buyer FOMO because in claim sales, you hear this all the time and sometimes you hear it at cons too, but it's honestly my least favorite thing to hear in a claim sale is when a seller is, is putting a book up and they say, um, you know, you know, buy it before it gets hot yeah. or uh, get it now before it blows up. Or my least favorite one is this book is going to go fast. So hurry up and claim. Yeah, um, right. 
No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's yeah. So it's you know they have every right to sell and market their books um, mm-hmm. as they wish, but um, I think when they say those types of things, they're putting it into the buyer's mind that like, oh, yeah. maybe I should. But you know what? The buyer is not the one who's on the hook for any sort of profit. The the buyer is not in in the there's no skin in the game for the buyer. Yeah, yet. there's there's no you know they might be like cl- like climbing their way up from book to book like yeah. okay, I'm going to buy this and then I'm going to sell it, make a little bit of money, then I'm going to buy this, sell that, make a little bit of money so that I can get to this book. Right. But they're not making money and they're, you know, paying their bills and paying their rent due to mark due to comic books. So that's why the whole the buyer FOMO doesn't make sense to me because there's nothing in it for them. It's a, it's an emotional thing, and the and a, maybe that's that's the part of it that that rubs you the wrong way is that in those moments when a seller, who, well, when a seller says, "Yeah, get it, get it before it's gone," like this is going to be worth more in two, you know, in in in, a, in three months when the movie comes out. So I'm, you know, this is your yeah. chance. You know, you're you're you are leveraging the emotions of your buyers and. You know, that's in the end, it's the buyer who has to be responsible for his or her own decisions. Right. Um, but it gets back to what we've talked about before. And it's a it, it is a, if this hobby is going to grow, uh, you, you, you one of the ways we talk about stewarding the hobby uh, is to be responsible as a seller, too. Right. Like, yeah, you don't want to uh, you, you don't you, you can fleece a, a, a buyer once or twice, but that buyer, you're not going to get them. Probably only once. You're not going to get it twice, and then and maybe that that buyer now disgruntled leaves the hobby entirely, and we haven't really now, yeah. now you've lost a customer for everybody. So you know, yeah, like I, I've seen a few Hulk ones um, go on on lives on live sales, and you know, like I said, I I had my my part this week. I I saw the book going up, so I thought, okay, I'm going to part with my books now. Um, but I think the book is at its ceiling. It's not getting higher than this. I don't think even if, even when the movie comes out, even if Harrison Ford does the most incredible job, I don't think it's going to push the book much higher than where it's at. Right. Um, and I've seen the, the book raw go on some claim sales and you know, it's, it's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Trailer just dropped. This book is hot, you know, yada, yada, yada. I've seen some other, seller's price um i'll tell you who it was after but um and like i I don't i don't blame them for this but they priced the book like 50 to 75 dollars above even what it was selling for that same day yeah and then they said i'm not taking offers on this like this is a firm price so like holding on that ground yeah um and yeah i think it's i think it's interesting um that kind of us as buyers were the ones that are like told that, you know, mm-hmm. all these, these things are going up because of us. And I'm not saying that, you know, there's definitely buyers out there who are buying every single, right. Every time somebody tells them this book is going out, like, but what you just described was, was the seller setting the market, not the buyer. The yeah. seller is saying, well, it's, I think it's going to be worth more in two weeks. So I'm going to set it at the price that I think is going to be in two weeks. I'm not taking offers. That's not, Actually, the market setting the setting the price, unless somebody unless somebody buys it for that price, right? It is, uh, in I would I would argue that's artificially inflated at that point. Yeah, and what's funny was the book didn't sell. It was a nine eight of Hulk one. Mm-hmm. He was asking this much. He said, "I'm not taking offers." It didn't sell, and like 15, 20 minutes later, he was like, "Man, I, I really thought that was gonna sell." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Well, when you're not taking offers, it's yeah. not gonna sell." Um, see, I, I think that there's a hand. Both parties definitely play a part, mm-hmm. um, but I think just looking at it, the sellers definitely have more skin in the game. Um, they have more to lose. Yeah, they also have more to gain. To be fair, like we don't have much t- to gain. Like we don't have any profits. Like we get a, a book in our collection, and at best we sell it on eBay for, and eBay takes thirteen percent. Like there's not much right. gain in that for us, except for the fact that maybe you could like tell your friends you have like this book yeah but but i don't know i don't know so yeah and, and i don't fault the sellers uh for being aggressive because you know for every book that 
they speculate on that hits, that they're able to uh, capitalize on those profits. There's dozens, if not hundreds of books that they've taken a bath on. Yeah, so for they sure. Gotta, they got to cash in when they win. Um, and I totally understand that. So, um, and, and also, you know, what's, what's the cliche, like fool and his money are soon parted, you know, it's like, yeah, Hey, it's, it's not my fault. You, you know, you, you bankrupted yourself buying, you know, 50 copies of the first, uh, you know, Jane as, uh, as, as Thor or whatever yeah. you did, you know? Um, but, and so it's not, it's not up to the seller to save the buyer from making a bad decision, but I just think it's good business practice in the long run for the, for the, for the seller and for the hobby in general. If and if sellers are a, a little more circumspect about how they price that stuff, yeah. you know, I, um, seller can do whatever he or she wants to do, obviously. Um, and yeah. So can the buyer, um, but you know, uh, no, nobody likes to get burned. You know, nobody no. likes to feel burned. And, no. And uh, and and when you do get the whole FOMO thing going on, uh, the 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 propensity to get burned is great. Right. You know, we've yeah. all been there. I still burn myself sometimes, even For sure. after forty years in the hobby. I'll still get foam. I'll FOMO myself. Yeah, you know, and it's ridiculous. Like, what am I doing? Um, I'm less of a speculative buyer now that, as than I am an emotional buyer, which is probably worse. <laughs> you know, because there's no there's no reasoning with it. I just want it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna be worth more or less, or I just but I want it. And it's a and, you know that's maybe partially because I've. I'm now starting to enter into the, the golden age arena. And <laughs> in that case, when you're buying golden age, it's anytime you see a book for sales FOMO, cause you don't know if you're ever going to see it again. Forget yeah. about what it might be worth tomorrow. Right. You just may never see it again. Right. Yeah, totally. So there's that. Yeah. So I, yeah, my guys, I, both parties definitely play a part in it, but I feel like a lot of people kind of put the buyers on the hook and the sellers get away clean. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's a little unfair. Sellers are the ones who set the prices seller or sellers are the ones who market their books how they want right. and a lot of i mean we hear it all the time they aggressively put it out there that kind of like in an inception type of way like makes us double think or think twice about oh sh- do, do i need this book should i buy right. this book i've been pursued um by buyers you know who will who will show me a book i'm sorry by sellers who will show me a book um, give me a price, and then I, you know, I, I say no, and then, and then they'll, they'll call me, or text me, or message me. Okay, how about this? And then, oh well, yeah, how about that. And and then, hey, that's just good salesmanship. I'm wrong with doing for that. sure. But what it does to me, and I mean, I may be unusual, but what it does to me as a buyer is, well, why don't you just give me your best price first? Like, I'm not going to ever feel comfortable buying from you if you're doing this because I yeah. feel like, well, what's your low? Like, I don't. Yeah. You're just. Just give me your best price, you know, yeah. or let me make you my, my offer and, and and that should be it. But if you keep coming back to me saying, well, how about I'll take another 50 bucks off and how about if I, 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 I'm never going to be comfortable with that buy because I'm never really sure if I just waited, you give me le- like just deal with me straight. For sure. And that's how it was with the where I bought those Neil Adams signatures. Like, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, you take a step closer to the door and they're like, OK, I'll do this. You're like, nah, I'm still good. And you take you take another step. To the, well, okay, well, I'll do this. And I'll throw in this. And you bought them. Yep. And ended up being a, a negative experience for you. And how, how many more books have you bought from that particular seller? No, none. Yeah, okay. There was so, also another situation yeah. that I, I had them before. I, well, it's what propelled me into pressing my own books because I gave them a stack of books to press. Yeah. And then I go to pick them up. And they were lost. I was, well, my first appearance of Electra, I was like, Hey brother, where's my Daredevil 168? He's like, you didn't give me a Daredevil 168. I was like, I 1000% gave you a Daredevil 168. And then he was like, uh, and I, I gave him a week and yeah. he, he finally found it. He's probably more thankful he found it. Yeah. It's kind of scary though. Cause um, it's just, it's at large somewhere, you know, who knows? Yep, it's so, under, is it sitting under an ashtray? You know? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that was essentially those, those happened very close yeah. those situations. It was first the books and then that situation. And I've never gone back. Yeah. So yeah, that's gets to what I'm saying. You, you, a good, a good seller will. And, and I, and, and I, when I say, I'm, what I'm, I'm about to say, I'll say this first, uh, 99% of the sellers that I've interacted with in a comic book community are what I would classify as good sellers. Yeah. Like, and a good seller will, will give you a good deal. And, and part of the joy for the good sellers is that they, they made money because they need to make money. Right. 
they don't make money, they can't go find you new books. Right. Um, and so we pay them the premium for doing that. Um, but also they're, they're stoked because they helped you, um, fill, fill a need in your collection. Yeah. Like that's, that's a, I mean, I remember one, I, I, I had a 1966 convertible Mustang. Um, and I, I, it was with my dream car. I bought it when I was just newly married. In fact, I bought it before I was married, uh, but, but had met Deb and, uh, and we were dating and I bought it. We got married. Uh, we moved out of the state. Uh, Dara was born. Uh, when we got ready to move back to California, I sold it, um, and it was it was hard to sell because it was still I still loved the car, um, but I sold it because I needed. Why else do you sell anything? I yeah. needed the money. You know, right. I, I had to finance uh, to me taking my family back to California, and it's expensive. Um, but one of the consolations I had, and it wasn't easy to watch somebody else get in my dream car and drive away. Yeah, and all I had was a check in my hand. You know, <laughs> um, regardless of what the check represented, this guy drove away in my car. Yeah, uh, but he was giving it to his wife for their anniversary, and it was and it was they were about the age then that I am now, mm -hmm. and it was the car she always she wanted as a kid. It was her dream car for much mm -hmm. much longer, and she got to have that. And that was and, and that sounds corny, but it was a huge and tremendous consolation for me. Yeah, for sure. And 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 my wife and I talked about it for a lot after that. It's nice to be a part of seeing someone fulfill a dream yeah and i think that's that definitely translates in the in our arena i yeah. I, I i see it i hear it I, I witness it in these sales and at these conventions with these sellers they're genuinely happy for me when i buy it when they help yeah. me buy a book that i'm like oh i've always wanted this book yeah. i can see they're just as happy as i am yeah and that's what i love about the hobby yeah that's just a good seller like yeah uh, like good at, at their on their core at their heart yeah and there's and the, and the and the hobby as far as i can tell is just full of those people yeah and it's great and that's also because they don't have to like they don't they're not moving the book onto you like you're you're taking it from them yeah like the the effort that it takes to sell a book and like really convince somebody is just like it's a lot of effort. It's a little grimy. You're trying to convince somebody like mm -hmm. if you're trying to convince somebody why they should have this book in their collection, I feel like that's where the whole situation is already lost. Yeah. Like if the buyer doesn't want it in in, in their collection, then don't 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 go convincing them. Right. Don't don't go saying things like, you know, it's going to get out soon. You better hurry up or this yeah. is you got to be the first to claim because it's going to go fast. Like don't don't start incepting those things into our yeah, mind like like these people are gonna they're gonna buy these books <clears throat> there's books there's other books that are gonna, gonna come around that yeah. you have that are big mm -hmm. that they want i bought a wonder woman 178 off of ebay and uh and it was one of those things where you know i made an offer you know that kind of stuff right and the guy uh when the book came in the mail I opened it up and i bought, i got the book i you know i i i I took a couple of pictures. I might have made an Instagram post about it, whatever, and I put it away. And then, I, you know, I, the packaging, I just kind of got rid of it. But there was a receipt there. And it was a couple of days later, I looked at the receipt. And on the receipt was a handwritten note. And it said, I've had this book in my personal collection for 30 years. I hope it brings you as much joy as it did me. Oh, wow. Gives me the chills. Yeah. My eyes water just talking about it. I was yeah. like, yeah, you know what it does? Like, and I've been where you are. I've sold books that I was like, oh. Yeah. And, and so I wrote him back. I'm like, hey, man, I will take good care of your book. Yeah. You know, it was, and it was a great completion of that sale. Yeah. You know? I love that about the hobby. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. All right. So who, what, when, where, why? Mm -hmm. There's FOMO on both sides, I think. Yeah. Uh, essentially, to sum, sum up that yeah. is so, buyers are on the hook heavy a lot. Sellers are not. We got to put sellers on the hook a little bit for FOMO because mm -hmm. they, they create that. They have to create it for yeah. the buyers um so there's a little bit of seller fomo there's a little bit of buyer fomo yeah. and that's what it is um so that leads us to our final question we'll try to keep it brief here mm. um how do you speculate well <laughs> gosh um boy that's you know it's a, this it's, it's such a tough question to answer but i, I think uh first thing is you, you have to do it um the first thing you do is you don't don't gamble you know if you want to gamble, find a casino and go gamble. <laughs> you know, um, but don't hypno hustlers a gamble. Yeah, so yeah, don't gamble. Like don't don't risk money you can't afford to lose. Like that's the, that that this goes without, that that's true for gambling. Like yeah. that's your thing. Don't put money into a comic book 
that you need for something else. Yeah. Like, you just understand that you may never, ever get your money out of this book. Right. You know, if you want to buy 10 copies of it, the first Hypno Hustler, go ahead. If that's money you have to blow and no big deal. And then, and then if you end up taking a bath on it, take a bath on it. But that would be yeah. rule number one for me. Don't put money out there that you can't afford. For sure. Um, afford uh, to, yeah, you can't afford to lose. Afford to lose. Uh, okay. You just, uh, uh, or that you need for something else. Yeah. <laughs> Cause comics aren't as liquid as you think. Like, right. You know, uh, so, uh, that just, a, a, just as a golden rule for, for speculating, don't do that. Um, and then, um, you know, don't, don't chase, don't chase the, the, the hot books. It's too late. Yeah. Uh, if you're, Go ahead. Uh, no, I was just going to add on to what you're saying. If yeah. you're chasing a hot book, that means it's probably already at its ceiling. Yeah. If it's on Key Collector, if Go Collect is making a newsletter about it, yeah. it's probably not going to go much higher. Yeah. So in other words, if you want to if you want to speculate uh, on comic books, uh, then you have to know the hobby. You know? Yeah. And not just and, and the movie hobby too, because we've already established our hobby movie industry. We've already established that movies are really the, the engine that drives the FOMO in a lot of ways. So. Uh, you need to get. You need to be willing to do your work. You got to do your work, and you and, and. But it starts by knowing the comic books. Yeah. Um, and and you have to do a lot. You got to read the comic books. You got to study the the the, the price guide. Study uh, the the different uh, sets of data that are out there. Uh, whatever, so that you so that you know it. Because otherwise, the best you can do is operate on secondhand information. Yeah. And that secondhand information means you're already behind the ape. You're already behind the curve. Right. You know. So don't do that. Um, and, and if you don't know the hobby, then you're going to lose. Like yeah. you're going to get burned. It's just, just the way it goes. Like you, yeah. you are. You, so uh, and, then, and then the last thing I'll say, and then I'll, I'll, I'll toss it back to you, is, is be patient. You know? Yeah. Um, be patient. Be, be like I've bought books purely on spec. You know, where I'm like, I, I wanna, I'm buying this to sell it. I'm going to buy five copies of it to sell it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, it, it didn't, you know, the, the, let's just say it was a movie. Um, and the trailer was no good, and the movie didn't do anything, and, and, and I mean, the, and the book didn't do anything, um, and then the movie came out and it didn't do anything. It's you don't unless I getting back to what I said before. If I if I put money into that book that I don't need, then I can afford to be patient. Yeah. So, I will be patient. It's not really a realized loss until you sell it for a loss. Right. So if you want to if you want to spec well. Uh, you limit your losses by don't sell at a loss. Yeah. If you can avoid it, and you can avoid it if you don't need the money right away. So it gets back to that same rule. So um, you know, if, if you miss the boat, then you have to make a decision. Do you want to just you know take the loss to take that money and put it something else, or not? I've I've seen books come back up. Yeah. Well, I think that's I think to kind of touch on a little bit of what you just said there. I think that's why if Go Collect and Key Collector and all these places are reporting a hot book. I think that's at its ceiling because that's when you have sellers across the board who are all mass selling their books at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get a huge volume of sales at about the same price. Yeah. And now sellers aren't in on the book anymore. So now after that, as a buyer, as a collector, if you're trying to go and flip it, you're kind of going to be the only one so there's not going to be that demand there's not going to be that heat check that's going on it's like it's going to be you with the book the demand is gone right and the sellers they're they're already on to something else right they're they're out of that book now so it's not going to get hot again um if it does you're lucky it's it's not going to happen consistently across the board that way it's it becomes it goes from being a short play to potentially a long play or no play at all yeah. Um, right now, a book that I would, I, if you have a little bit of time, the books to buy now are the books that are ice cold. Yeah. You, know, you buy when everybody else is, is selling and you sell when everybody else is buying. Right here. Avengers 8. Yeah. That's, I would be buying this book now. Yeah. I, wouldn't, I certainly wouldn't sell it now, but I'd buy it now. I, you can get an 8 0 for, for what I bought that, a yeah. 5 0 right now. Yeah. So, which, hurts you yeah but that that shouldn't stop you from buying an 8-0 yeah because if but it's a longer play now right you're back you're out of the fast lane with this book same thing with uh marvel spotlight 32 i think first spider woman mm. that's a book to buy now it's not a book to sell now yeah that hyped up prior to the madam web and now it's psh, you know yeah um yeah the only time is a buyer where you're where your spec is going to mean something 
is when other sellers are making the book hot. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened with me this week with Hulk one. Yeah. I bought a, cu- I bought a couple copies m- years ago, literally like 2022 when I first started collecting again. Yeah. Because as somebody who reads comics, who knows a little bit about the lore and I'll talk about this a little bit more about reading. I can kind of foresee where these storylines are going. Yeah. So I bought Red Hulk fairly cheap, made money on both of the books when all the sellers were selling their copies too. Yeah. The trailer came out. Now sellers on their eBay pages on claim sales are mass selling. So they're yeah. creating that FOMO. They're, the yeah. buyers are buying in to the whole idea that, mm-hmm. okay, this book could go up. It, it might not. So I'm just like, okay, I'm jumping in the boat with them. I have a couple copies. I'm going to sell it when yeah. they do. And the buyers are excited. They want they, they, they would like to have this book. It's fine. Right. But if, if you don't have the sellers essentially behind you also selling these spec books with like with you and you're just solo on, on eBay with a book crazy priced and, and no one's buying it and it's not on a hot yeah. list. One, one sale, two sales is not going right. to, is not going to put a book on a top 10 hot no. book for the week. And, and you were smart because you sold it. Yeah. Might it be worth more in a month? Sure. In a year when the movie comes out, but, maybe. But that's a, a, another thing. Don't be greedy. You I know, saw, yeah. I, take your profits. Yeah, I saw, I saw, I, I can make the money now. So, yeah. you know, I'm going to get rid of it. Yeah, so you got you to gotta have that conversation with yourself. If you're going to be a speculator in this business, you have to say, um, or in this hobby, whatever you want to call it, is I will, um, I'm, this is the percentage I, that where I'm going to pull the trigger. When it yeah. gets to this price, I'm going to pull the trigger. That's very hard to do because the, the excitement generating and everybody's like, and you start, you know, again, Avengers 8, you start thinking, well, I mean, Jonathan Majors was, was he knocked it out of the park. I mean, this is going to be, and who could have imagined what was going to happen with that book, right? Yeah. Um, that, and you didn't buy, you didn't buy this as a spec book. You bought it because you like this character. Because so I'm keeping so, it. Yeah. So no big deal. But for, for, for uh, the seller who's looking clearly at just, you know, significantly, making a profit just that's the idea i'm going to turn and burn these books fine that's nothing wrong with doing that but just recognize you're not going to sell it at the if you're going to be consistently successful you're not going to ever sell a book at its peak yeah you're going to sell it on the way up and then you're going to buy when it's dead yeah because you've re- you're smart you have re- you know why you've read it you, you understand you understand the trends whatever but you sell it on the on the way up you don't try to sell don't try to time it and sell it at the peak because you won't you'll miss it and if you miss it it's a steep drop on the other end. So, and then you make your profit on being successful a few times. You know, Don't chase the peak. You're never going to catch the peak. Also, trust me, if a seller thinks that a book is going to continue to go up, they're not going to sell it before then. I'm glad you said that. That's such a great point. When, when it, buyers, if a <laughs> seller is telling you, look, you got to buy this book now because it's going to be worth double in a month the ant the, the thing you got to say back end is then why are you selling it to me yeah that's a great point i'm so glad you brought that point up because yeah. it's a buyer beware moment yeah um uh, the the money you the, the money you make on a book uh on the sale really comes from what you pay for it right so um try to get the best deal you can you know for sure honest don't don't overpay on a spec book because now you're really cutting into your ability to make any money on it at yeah all, you know so uh yeah so if the sellers are selling it if the sellers are selling a book that's a spec book and it's hot on key collector app or or ebay there's a lot of recent sales that's probably the time to get out of the book not to get into it yep um so uh yeah uh other things reading just knowing the lore knowing where things go um Obviously, I haven't read every single comic book. I don't read every single character. Right. Um, I'll read characters that I like, and then I'll, I'll read summaries of like what's going on in in kind of other yeah. um, story arcs and and stuff like that. But I think if I think it, genuinely, I think if you're reading comic books, that's when you're gonna spec the best because you can see miles ahead. Yeah. What's coming? Yeah, I get that. that's a great point. You have to read the current stuff and under and 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 know the old stuff too and understand what the characters are. Otherwise, you're not you. That's that knowledge base you have to have. Yeah. You know. And as a side note, uh, if you're going to be a speculator, don't complain <laughs> when when the book that you sold um, ten years ago is has another zero on it. Don't complain. Yeah. That's the game you got into. Yeah. You know. I mean, I've done that. I've sold. <laughs> I bought. 
I think four copies of Hulk 340 off the newsstand for 60 cents a pop or whatever it was, 75 cents. I don't even remember what the cover price is on that book, was on that book. Uh, and I sold all four of them for like 45 bucks each or 50 bucks each in the, in the, in the 90s or 2000s and i know everybody's watching this or and, and you too probably like oh man that's what a bummer for you because we're no i i think about the profit margin i think about the percentage i, I made 60 cents to 45 yeah. dollars that's that's a huge win for me yeah and and okay great it's, it's worth a whole lot more than that now but i'm not gonna whine and complain about it i made my money on those yeah. books i might lament that i didn't keep one for myself yeah but lesson learned. I usually now when I when I sell things like that, I keep one. Yeah. Um, but I must have really been desperate. <laughs> <laughs> um, other uh, speculating tips is if you're reading. Again, all of this is just going to come back to reading, mm -hmm. but um, adjacent things that are adjacent to, um, kind of what's going on. So, um, this is a this is a free one for you guys. Um, Red Hulk is hot, right? Yeah. There's a first Red She-Hulk. That's a few issues later in that same run. Kind of flying under the radar. She-Hulk is in the universe. Guess out of the bag now. Right? Like, you can get it a lot cheaper than you can that that first Red Hulk. So, um, just knowing kind of things like that. And, I mean, honestly, I guess this isn't really spec, but, like... Second appearances are, I think, are more powerful than people are giving credit to. Yeah. And I think, well, I guess this is where the spec comes in. I think second appearances will start to ramp up. You, you just, you just uh, hit upon what my, what my sleeper pick is going to be on the Patreon. Mm, nice. Actually. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah, I think, I think s s the more that first appearances and speculation drives up the price of first appearances, I think the more valuable second appearances are going to become yes like fantastic four six we talked about it last week on the patreon yeah like ff5 is just it's in the stratosphere now it, you can't unless you're going to try hard to get it like i am and it's it's going to take a lot of effort for me yeah or you, you're a whale like ff5 yeah. is just like not a book that the average collector can get nope but ff6 is mm -hmm. and it's a great second cover Boom. come on so yeah, there's a lot going for it. So I think second appearances have a lot more valuable than what the market currently is giving them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, s search dollar bins. You know. Yeah. Look for look look for things that look pick up things that look familiar to you. Yeah, low. That's um, a dollar bin is low risk. I mean, yeah. you you can take a flyer on a lot of stuff coming out of a dollar bin. Yeah. You know? I've bought an X Men Annual fourteen so many <laughs> over times over and over again. You do. Out of a dollar bin. That's like your FF annual too. It's the same yeah, thing. Just exactly. The they find you. Um, so yeah, read, look for when, oh, sorry if, if that noise came through. Um, when things get hot, look at what other keys are kind of in the same realm. So like mm -hmm. first Red Hulk. Okay, well, what, what happens in that storyline? Like, what else is going on? Because if they're going to put that in the movie... Then they're obviously taken from that storyline, and there might be something that's not in the trailers right. that might blow up, right? That might just be crazy popular. Yeah. Um, when the the it's all said and done, when the movie's out, and so you, you saw that with the uh, Fantastic Four or just Galactus in general, as people are expecting to see Galactus show up in the MCU pretty soon, um, and we everybody knows about Silver Surfer, but what what is slowly now percolating to the surface are are specking on those other heralds of glass yes you know that the, they've already gone up now i think it's too late but but uh there's there's maybe four or five in in the in the MC, in the marvel universe um comic book universe where you have first appearance of new heralds of galactus and yeah and those got specked on yeah yeah rightly so honestly yeah so yeah i think that's I think that's pretty much it. So uh, number one, I would say how, how to speculate. Well, I would say read. Yeah. Read that you're going to get the most knowledge. You're going to, if you're reading, then what they're reading in the writer's room right. to, to write their movies. And if you're reading those same things, you, you may as well be in the writer's room with them. Right. Like, and so, this, and this was not, this, this episode was not sponsored by your LCS, but, <laughs> yeah. but go to your LCS and buy some books. Yeah. You know? So read, um, if people are telling you the book's hot, or sorry, if people are telling you that 
the book is going to go up in value. If sellers are telling you that, if Go Collect is telling you that the book is hot, if Key Collector is telling you the book is hot, that probably means that the book is at its ceiling. Mm-hmm. So it's probably a bad, a bad uh, yeah. speculation buy. Um, it might hit, but it's going to be mm-hmm. here and there. It's not yeah. going to be a consistent thing. And um, what were some of the other It'd things? Be willing, be willing to take your profits. Yeah. Sell sell early. Sell early. Better to sell earlier than 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 too late. Yeah. Um, what was the other one that you said? Yeah. Don't 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 oh. miss what you can't afford to lose. Yeah. Don't don't get in on a book where you can't afford to lose. So make sure you're reading. Yeah. Gain all that knowledge in the lore and kind of what's happening in the Marvel yeah. DC worlds, the indie worlds. Indy, there's a lot of speculation potential oh with Indy. Yeah. That, that's well, a whole nother episode. Yeah, whole other, we, we really need to do an episode on that. Like, there's some really great storylines in Indy that. Yeah. That, um, it seems like. Well, anyway, we'll, <laughs> we'll save that for the. Um, it, it, if you have, I'd love for our our viewers or listeners to share with us in the comments some of their their best speculations and mm. maybe their worst specs too. Yeah. Those you know th- those are bo- those are fun stories either way. Yeah. So uh share with us and I, th- that'd be fun reading for me, I know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, S- some books where you hit big and then some books where yeah. you took big L's. We'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll commiserate. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, that there's a bunch of other small tips yep. that we could probably give, but I think those are the big ones. Yeah. Read, don't get in on a book where you can lose. And if somebody's telling you to spec, if a seller's telling you to spec on this book, no. probably don't. No. Speculation, it's speculation is you, you're ahead of the game. Yeah. That's what speculation is. Yeah, it's not you're speculating when everybody else is speculating. And and uh, you know maybe this isn't good sportsmanship, but keep it to yourself until you cl- until you get the books you want to get. And then if then you you know then you yeah. can share what it is. Like, yeah, you know, don't <laughs> keep keep it keep it you know let your friends know, but keep it quiet until you get. You know, you get as many of those books for a buck as you can. Yeah. You know, we were going to talk about Torpedo Con and what our wants and desires are for the convention, but I don't think we have time and it would be more fun. We'll just tell you and then in the, in another episode or two what we, yeah what, what, what we came back with. What we end up with. Yeah. yeah. So we'll say, we'll, we'll, we'll save that. Uh, but we do have to finish this. Sorry for the longer. Well, I guess you guys probably don't care that it's longer, but yeah, um, <laughs> it's going to be a longer main episode. We'll still have the Patreon and stuff. Yeah. But uh, the final thing for um, this episode before we move on to Patreon stuff is Bob and I have a little bet going on. <laughs> yes. So we have our Deadpool predictions. Yes. Um, so here I have five questions. Yeah. And a tiebreaker. The heck? I have five questions and a tiebreaker in case one of the questions just becomes like irrelevant. But mm-hmm. um, there's obviously a lot of rumors, spec going on with um, yeah. Deadpool and Wolverine movie. Um, it's the first movie in like eight to nine months. It's been a while. It's been a while since we've had a Marvel movie. I think yeah. the Marvels was the last one. I think that was October. Yeah. There's been um, some fatigue, so it's good. We've got a break. So, yeah, we haven't had much. X Men ninety seven is the most recent thing, but no no big screen. Yeah. And uh, this movie was announced a couple years ago. Deadpool was a billion dollar movie, and yeah, so there's a lot of weight on this movie coming up. A lot of rumors, wow. a lot of leaks. Billion dollar movie. Who knows? Who knows what's gonna be what? Deadpool is a loved character. You don't love him that much. I just don't know him uh, as <laughs> as well as maybe you do, but yeah, he's okay. But I've got five questions here. Uh, related to the leaks and related to some rumors. Yes. And we're going to answer them. Our answers are going to be different. And so whoever gets the most answers correct out of these questions is going to get a book. So yeah. I've, I've put a book up. Yeah. You've put a book up. You want to put show show our... Let's go through the questions right, first. And then we'll show... Okay. So um, for the... Well, I, for the books, we put a $50 floor yeah. and a $100... Uh, ceiling. ceiling, which is hard. That's a hard target, actually. Really, it was tough. <laughs> it was tough. Uh, mine was. I knew immediately what I was going to do. Did you? Oh, man. But right. um, I guess maybe that's why I manipulated it in my favor because I had to. <laughs> I had to fit in. But okay. All right. First question: Will Taylor Swift show up as Dazzler? Yes. You think yes? Yes. Okay. Bob is a yes. I don't think she is. I. I think there's a chance she's in it. I don't think she's in it as Dazzler. Dazzler, sorry. Okay. Maybe she'll just show up as a, in a movie poster or something, like a concert poster. I just think she's going to be there in it some way. 
I think a lot of uh, Dazzler 130 or sorry X Men 130 spec buyers are going to be a little sad. Uh, well, I, I I can't say I'm a 130 spec buyer. I've had it forever, but I do have that book. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping. Well, you're long. I should I should have jumped on when you were and you were telling me this way, but when it was cheap. Yeah. Cheap. I actually I'll tell you actually I'll tell you the story because it's not relevant. But yeah, you were you were all about Dazzler when nobody cared about it. Yeah. Um. So I wish I would have listened to you before. It's okay. Um. There's <laughs> another there's another spec that you have that I'm listening to you now. It's a DC spec, but. Um, okay, second question. So, will Taylor Swift show up as Dazzler? You say yes, I say no. Second question, will Blake Lively be Lady Deadpool? <sighs> Man, this is, I mean, this is a, what, do you want to, we're going to guess opposites on this, right? I'm going to so say you, yes. Okay, then I'll say no, because I really, I have no idea. <laughs> I think it, it just makes sense. Okay. Um, I think it would be funny. She's an right. actress. Like, it makes more sense. Yeah. But, but you say yes. So, so we need to be different on these. So you say yes. Yeah. So that puts me in as a no. Okay. All right. Third question. There's a lot of rumors about Hulk being in it. It seems like Hulk is going to be in it. But what I haven't seen in these leaks and rumors is which Hulk will be in it. I've seen a lot of other characters being leaked and, and rumors and specifically which ones it'll be. But I haven't seen anybody specify which Hulk. Um, so I actually watched Ang Lee's Hulk movie this past week. Top five superhero movie, by the way. Yeah, great movie. I think it was overhated in its time. The editing was a risk. The editing style is crazy, mm-hmm. but it's super cool. Anyways, so assuming that Hulk cameos, we kind of have two questions here banking on this, but I think it's going to happen. So which Hulk will cameo? <laughs> Such a wild shot in the dark. But I'm going to go with the Eric Banner. Eric Bana, okay. Yeah. So we got Eric Bana. More of a hope than a than a guess. I just hope that would be <laughs> that would be so cool. Um you know, I don't disagree with you on that. Um I think it could be. I think it very well could be. Um but we have a lot of Hulks to choose from. I don't think it's gonna be Ed Norton, because Ed Norton has beef with Marvel. I think it could be Lou Ferrigno. Like, oh I you yes, g- that's what I should have said. Yes. If you want to change your answer, can I change my yeah. answer? I think it's gonna be Lou Ferrigno. Yeah, okay. That's actually what I wanted to answer. Okay. I think it's Ferrigno. I'll take Eric Bana because I've seen Ferrigno show up in things here and there. Yeah, yeah. Lately. Um, I mean, what if that turns out to be the reason that, that I win that you let me switch? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I honestly, I don't. Mark Ruffalo. What would, would be the point of it? I mean, it could it's already. You know, it what could I mean? be he's. I just feel like it would. It would. I don't know. Maybe I'm just like overanalyzing. I feel like it would make people upset that like he's like he's been Professor Hulk this time, but then for a campy cameo, like he gets to be a real Hulk again. Like I don't know. Is yeah. I don't know. He's, I, he's forfeited his his angry Hulk. Rights. There's also going to be a lot of like, okay, well, what's going to happen to Smart Hulk? And and is every multiverse version of the Hulk? Yeah, it, it would just be tough because you're not gonna have Professor Hulk fight Wolverine. Like that's you can't have Smart Hulk. What if what if issue number two, 1977, already answered that question and it wasn't good? <laughs> not supposed to have a Smart Hulk. So yeah, I think the multiverse is already set. We have different Bruce Banners. Yeah, I I don't think that they can bring in. I mean, I guess they could. I don't really know what the rules are, but they could bring in a, a multiversal. Mark Ruffalo Hulk to be like an actual Hulk, not Professor Hulk. But I don't know. I think it's likelier that they're going to just hit on nostalgia yeah. and either bring in, I think Lou Frigno or Eric Bana are, are safe bets. Frigno would be amazing. That's my Hulk. I was <laughs> a kid. <laughs> okay. All right. So we got Lou Frigno for Bob, for Mr. Longbox, Eric Bana for Spro. So on this, will there be a Hulk 181 homage? No. No. All right. I mean, I think if they even if they, did, if they did it, it would pass so fast you wouldn't even notice it. Like really, unless they froze it, like they could freeze it and like do some cool editing with it. That's what I think they'll do, actually. Okay, so you say yes. I I believe okay. yes. I would be stoked if they did it because I think it would be really fun. But I'm gonna say no. Um, now, what happens if like Hulk 181 just appears in it somewhere? Like, does that count? No, it's got to be an homage. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think it will because I think. I guess you could also do all. I would say no on this. A Hulk three forty homage. That's more likely to me. Really, I, I think 
because it, because it wouldn't be hard to do. It's not an action shot. It was just a whoosh. Mm, interesting. But that one is, you know, we'll see. They're both iconic. Yeah, either one. Um, Maybe they'll do both. That would be crazy. We'll add that as another tiebreaker. Just Okay. Uh, so I say yes. In case we need one. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and a question number five. Uh, I think FF is going to cameo. Um, I mean, it's kind of inevitable with all the multiverse stuff and, um, whether or not we'll see a full team, I don't know. I think we'll see one person. I haven't seen any rumors or any leaks, so this is just a full shot in the dark. Um, but I think with that secret wars page, um, that they had in the first trailer, uh, secret wars five, Secret Wars has a lot to do with Doctor Doom, uh, at least the mm-hmm. 2015 one, which mm-hmm. inevitably is tied directly with Fantastic Four. So, I, yeah, I think I think we will get one. I don't think okay. it'll be the Pedro led FF. I mm-hmm. think it'll be either the Ian Grufford <laughs> or the Miles Teller led. Uh, like I said, I don't know if we'll see the whole team. <laughs> um, it could just be one person. It could be one from each. I don't know. But this is why we have tiebreakers. Okay. Um, so but, what we'll do is we're just going to bank on a team. If one person from a team shows up, then you get the whole point okay. for the whole team. Well, the funny thing is that it would be really funny if they, if they had the, 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 the OG Fantastic Four movie, the, the, the kind of silly one that they did. That never released? Yeah, that never released. Because I, I, I'm actually friends with the guy who played the Hulk. I mean, the Hulk, the thing in that. Oh, really? So... But I think if he was, if, if they were appearing, I would know that. So that's probably a no. I, that I would, that's still a, that would be sick though. I mean, even if that. it's just read like from that, that would be so crazy. It but could. they won't. They, I mean, uh, and and I and he, I have no inside knowledge on this, by the way. It would be, yeah. Uh, but no, I'm going to go with the uh, with the the two, the two like two thousand early two thousands. The Ian Grufford. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think. I think if we see anybody cameo, I don't mind taking. I, I think it's likelier, but I'll let I'll let you have that one. The only thing that makes me confident in the Fantastic 2015 mm-hmm. FF movie is Michael B. Jordan, and he's already on retain. I mean, I, I don't know if he's on retainer, uh, yeah. but he. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't be hard for Marvel to be like, "Hey, can we can we get you real quick?" Um. So. Yeah. Uh, um. That, yeah, okay, so that's our tiebreaker. Uh, that's not our tiebreaker. Oh, that's not our tiebreaker. That's right. That's our fifth one. This is a, there's some sauce. I don't even know. I know. And it, I don't even know what I stand to win here. This honestly, it could, it could it could even be that both sh- like here's what I think Marvel could do because we have Chris Evans yeah as um, yeah, Human in, Torch yeah and we have Michael B Jordan as Human Torch both moved on to the MCU in different roles. So I think it, there could be okay, some like that comedy. Would be, that would be amazing if so, we did that. In which case we would be a, it would be a wash uh, for us. Yeah. In which case we have the second tiebreaker, which is wait, that's not tiebreaker. That's no, right. this is this is th- that was our five. That's so our five. Okay. Will Taylor Swift show up? Will Blake Lively be Lady Deadpool? Which Hulk will cameo? Will there be a Hulk one eighty one homage? Which FF will cameo? So that's our five. Yeah. Our tiebreakers are Hulk three forty. You say yes, yes, I say no. And the big one, will it cross a billion? No, as you said, it was a billion dollar budget. No, no, oh, not but, a billion but dollar I mean, budget. Does not, no, I, I, worldwide, will it theatrical receipts cross a billion? I, I'm probably going to be wrong, but I say no. All right. But the funny thing is, I hope it does, because I want Marvel to have a successful movie. I, I think yes. I think okay. yes, because I think... People, even people that aren't into the Marvel movies, yeah. still love Deadpool. Yeah, and and Ryan Reynolds is and Ryan Reynolds has hilarious. such a draw, and so does yeah. um, Hugh Jackman. They both have huge draws, but mm-hmm. I think it's edgy, and the humor, the humor is edgy. The humor is raunchy. Rated R, isn't it? It's rated R. Yeah. So you're just you're opening to a lot. Well, I guess you're also closing off. Right, you don't have to, like parents taking the family yeah who knows i think i think i think it's gonna with flying colors i think it, it okay. will pass yeah. well marvel certainly hopes you're right yeah i yeah i mean they could, I'm use, sure they they could use a win and i i would like to see them get a win because i would like to, them to keep making movies well i think that's also what most people like myself everything's been kind of eh recently yeah and then you throw 
the Deadpool name. Deadpool's been successful twice before. I, this this is the movie to get people excited and to bring about. Back Hugh Jackman. Come You're on. right. Come on. So I think, all right. I think it has everything that it needs to pass a billion. Whether or not the movie's good, that's the last thing it needs. We'll see. Yeah. Um, all right. So that's our Deadpool bet. So what's um, at stake? Let's. Uh, it's not this. It is not that. <laughs> Can't have it. <laughs> all right. So. We both brought raw books. No slabbies. Um, who should go for? I went. I went first for. Okay. So, you right, so this first. this one is what I'm putting at at at, uh, at stake here, and uh, it it's a book from my OG personal collection. I bought this uh, from the comic shop when it came out uh, back at the uh, seventy five cent price point, and it's a book I know you would like to have <laughs> because it's Batman, uh, and it's a uh, bat. It's a uh, Batman uh, Year One Part Two. So it's uh, not my glasses. Yeah, of course. Batman 405. Um, oh, wow. Uh, it is unread. Um, I bought more than one copy. And uh, I've won the copy. I've sold all the copies except for two. And the, and I'm keeping one for myself. That uh, Two unread copies. Show is, uh, your camera. Oh, sorry. Yes, I need to show the camera. Uh, it, it is still in the in the in the my light uh, now my light back in the in the late 80s early 90s is different than my lights now it's just really it, you'll see but anyway um, first Carmen Falcone oh wow uh, appearance in this book and if I'll, I don't wait I'll, I'll buy that off you all right all right so uh, we got Batman year one part two yeah. near mint yeah well it's a nine it's 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 a, it's a nine four nine it's yeah, definitely in the nines. It's got nine eight potential because, as I, like I said, it's unread. So whatever you know, and if and if if you win it and you grade it, it's nine point eight. Uh, so be it. I'm actually <laughs> really happy for you because that, that you know that's great for you. But uh, uh, yeah, that's that, there it is. All right, I'm excited. Yeah. All right, let me show you mine. Okay. It's also a Batman book. All right, nice. And we have Batman issue number six. Yes. Court yes. of Owls. Yes, you know, you know, I want that book. Uh, this is a speculation book. Um, I am hardcore because of reading. I believe in the future of Court of Owls and what the storyline and how amazing the storyline is, and not just that, but the Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo combination for these first 15, 20 issues, whatever. I don't know how long they worked on it together. Amazing. Like people put them up there with um, Miller and um, Jansen yeah. as far as just Beautiful. the work that they do together. Um, so right. that is two yeah. Batman books yeah, unplanned. In. We didn't know um, prior yeah, to Yeah, that's today. crazy. So this is, I mean, you can odds. look, this is a near mint. Um, the only yeah. thing is this color rub down in the corner, but. Um, ah, nah, it's beautiful. I would say I nine it. four. Love it confidently. A hey, nine four. You know, um, and nine four is kind of your number. It is my number. That would have been probably would have been a cool trade for us. Yeah, like, I mean, honestly, yeah, it's actually they're, they're actually pretty equal in terms yeah. of, of of what so, they're doing. Let me, see, let me grab them that is here. very cool. So, all right, so serious serious books at stake here. We got what's this one? Batman, Batman Year One Part Two. Mm-hmm. Batman, two Batmans. Who would have thought? I mean, that's the first court of owls. Coincidence. Yeah. So, um, where should we keep them? Maybe I'll give them the. Da- maybe I'll put them in a in a in a box and I'll give it to Dara. And yeah, I'll tell Dara go. she's yeah, gonna be the holder. She'll safeguard it for us. <laughs> <laughs> she'll be our our uh, uh, what's escrow. <laughs> yeah, escrow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. Long episode, but yeah. um, battery's dead, so it's not gonna be there for Patreon. Uh, maybe we can take a break. Yeah, and charge it up, and then. Sure. Get back to it. But um, yeah, thanks everybody yeah. for watching so far. Thanks for hanging with us. This is a lot of fun. Yep. And uh, we hope that you learned a little bit about speculation. Yeah. Go see Deadpool, but not everybody because I want to stay under five. <laughs> uh, what would you say? A billion? I want to stay under a billion, billion. so I can get that four to owls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching. And we're going to be talking about our head scratchers and sleepers. Mm-hmm. And what else did I have on there for the Patreon? I know, I know one thing. I feel like I'm missing yeah, one of the other one ones. Yeah, a couple things. There's... Oh, just... Oh, because we were going to move the, the Deadpool predictions, but we didn't end up moving. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Our head scratchers and sleepers. 
And there's a little bit of Instagram drama this week. Yeah, that, uh, a bit drama. We're gonna we're gonna go over. So, um, you can head over to Patreon link. Link is in the bio if you're on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Patreon.com slash the comic room if you wanna catch more content. There it is. So thanks so much for watching and we'll see you thanks, guys, guys next week. See you. It'll be the same way that like New Mutants not <laughs> I did I was I was trying, I was trying not to look at you because I knew if we locked eyes it was over. <laughs> <laughs>